Paul. David Morgan's house by the sound of it. There's only a child here. Virginia. Oh, that poor little boy, he's absolutely frozen. Miss Trail, will you please leave this to us? Come on, Annie. Come on, let me have it. Found this, sir. Over behind the tower. It's a grapnel. A grapnel of a balloon. Of a French balloon, Sir Frederick. Aeronautical section, Army of the French Republic. That child is coming with me. Oh, no, he's not. Look at how frightened he is. And the poor little thing's half dead with cold. Does anyone have any brandy? Come on, Annie, that'll make you feel much warmer. Come on, now, drink it up. Look, I'll taste it. There. Just a little sip. Come. Come. <coughs> Glynis, put him in the carriage. Not until he's answered some questions. Well, you won't get a word out of him in his present condition. Not a word. Virginia, it is well known that the French intend to use balloons when they invade us. Man by intrepid aeronauts, age 10. Really, Sir Frederick? I may be an American and therefore a suspicious character to any true Englishman, but my aunt is Lady Fell of Caldy Island. Glynis, will you put him in the carriage? All right, Glynis, I'll carry him. Come. Well, whoever he may be, he'll prove an excellent excuse for me to pay my respects to you. First thing in the morning. Well, in the meantime, your prisoner will be perfectly safe with me on Caldy Island. Dylan. Yes, miss. I think, at last. Well, William, where is Miss Virginia and this child? I'd have people know that though I am tied to my bed, I'm still mistress in my own house. The boy is being given a bath, my lady. Miss Virginia will be here directly. Lydia, if you don't concentrate on your own cards, I shall accuse you of cheating. I never cheat, Andrew Ogden. <laughs> if me luck's out, I have been known to assist it a little. Well, it's possible I've been your guest so long. I always know what you're going to lead. You pirate! How many aces are there in this pack? I hope you'll be my guest for a long time yet. Ah, oh, here she is. Yes, here I am. Good evening, Captain. Good evening, Virginia. What's all this I hear about mysterious small boys being sheltered under my immaculate roof? One mysterious small boy. One. One? What do we make of that, Andrew? Virginia will explain, no doubt. No doubt at all. We're a notoriously inventive family. I found him, sitting on a tomb in the churchyard. In my young days, it used to be under a gooseberry bush. I'm glad you've broken new ground. The trails are never dull, whatever else they may be. He arrived, apparently, in a balloon. In a balloon? 
Andrew, did you hear that? A balloon. My niece, you're a genius. What imagination, what audacity. Oh, a balloon. God help us, Andrew, a balloon. <laughs> My dear, if by any chance there's been a gooseberry bush in your life, you can tell me. There was a time when I came within an inch of one myself. <clears throat> you can speak frankly, I'm quite unshockable. Thank you, dear aunt. That is very kind of you. But what I've said is absolutely true. This child is completely unknown to me. All that I can tell you about him is that he is presumably French. Ah, Frenchmen are delightful. And he is at least ten years old. Ten years old? But you're a... Twenty-two. Then it's true that you found him on a tombstone. <laughs> yes. I think you'll have to believe her, Lydia. Unless, Andrew. No, well, you can see for yourself in the morning. Now, is my reputation clear? I'm afraid it probably is. <laughs> Good. Then I'll go to oh, bed. Oh, no, you haven't told me about the dinner party yet. Who was oh, there? I'll tell you all about it tomorrow morning. I can't stab all night talking like you do. I haven't got your stamina, young lady. <laughs> Good night. Good night, night, my dear. Good night, dear. Why are the young so sedate nowadays, Andrew? It's impossible that you should have another ace. <laughs> I'm going to count the pack. <laughs> Dropped off to sleep, Miss Virginia, as soon as his head touched the pillow. But did he say anything? One word, Miss, over and over again. I think he was calling for his mother. Good night, Miss Virginia. Good night, William. Good night, Miss Virginia. Good night, Gladys. If you don't tell me who you are, we're never going to be able to find your mother and father for you. What's the matter? Don't you trust me? You? Yes. Yes, I do. Well, then? They say I must not say anything to anyone. Who are they? I must not say. I promised I would not. Not even to me? Oh, no, no, not to you. They said the most terrible things might happen. Honey. Look, you're not in France now. Nothing can happen to you here. It's not only me. You don't know what might happen to... to other people. I have seen dreadful things. You gave me a name. You call me Honey. <laughs> that isn't a name. It's a... it's a word from my country. Like saying, dear, or Cherie, Honey. That is my name now. Honey. Look! A boat! Oh, no one's gonna hurt you, honey. No one. Trim figure, that niece of yours. I discovered very young why naval men always carry spyglasses. I remember admiring yours, my dear, without a spyglass. My Andrew. <laughs> I wasn't too bad from the neck down, was I, to poor old Xerxes hit that fence and smashed us both up for good? <laughs> but you haven't told me who was in that boat. 
Young Venner. Ah, handsome fellow. Never could decide whether I preferred the army or the navy. Yeah. Still can't. He's come to make another attempt at questioning the boy, I suppose. Or to ask Virginia to marry him again. Again? Are you sure? Well, of course I'm sure. And I may say that when young women start finding children in churchyards, it's high time they got married. <laughs> he will not take me away? Of course not. You're safe here. Good day to you, Miss Trail. Good morning. And to you, sir. And how are you today? Oh, honey, it's all right. Hun, why don't you run up to the kitchen and give those to cook, huh? You will come too? Yes, in a minute. Go on, Howard, they won't be cold enough for tea. Has he said anything to you? No, not a word. I don't think he will either. Somebody he either loves or fears seems to have told him not to say anything. The wreckage of the balloon has been washed up near Milford. There was no sign of any bodies. So he's all alone then? Well, he can stay here with me. You may be cumbered with him for life. His father's probably a Republican murderer in any case. Mm. Somehow I don't think so. I think that little boy was brought up by decent parents. To drink down brandy by the glass? Yes, that was very strange. You know, if he talks to anyone at all, I think it'll be to me. He needs a lot of tenderness and love, and I can give him that. I envy him his good fortune. He tried to get away, didn't he? Ah, but I caught him, didn't I? <laughs> yes, I caught him. Well, bless my soul of it, isn't the mysterious young man who dropped out of the sky in a balloon? Well, 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 they're a fine way to travel, isn't it? Did you fly the balloon all by yourself, hmm? No, don't be frightened. Don't be frightened. You'll like it here, I'll be bound. Full of surprises, he's called the island. Have they told you about the treasure? Treasure? <laughs> Gold and jewels. The monks brought it here to hide it from the king. King Henry VIII, that was, that used to cut his wife's heads off. Just like they do in France. Oh, let me go. Who'd you say was with you on that balloon? I must... Ah, Miss Trail, Sir Frederick. Mr. Patient. I am, as you see, taking advantage of your aunt's kind permission to do a little shooting. I shall offer some of my trophies to your kitchen. Pigeon pie is quite the delicacy, you know. Perhaps you... I'm sure my aunt will be most grateful. I chanced on our young friend, then we had a little chat. Charming child. Good morning, Mr. Patient. Yes, you do that very nicely, don't you, Dylan Evans? See, you aren't a little brighter in the head. Now what's got into you? Aren't you ever content? Content? What have I got to be content about, I'd like to know? I'd look as good as she does if I had her money. Wouldn't I, Dylan? I love you, Clinis. You know that. But the man I marry's got to have gold in his pocket. Plenty of gold. I'll make my fortune. You see if I don't. Then hurry. I'm not waiting forever. Who's that coming? Go away. Do as I say, quickly. A good day to you, Miss Gladys. I've got some pigeons as a gift for Lady Fell. Found out anything? It's very difficult. She's always with him. A clever girl like you should have found out by this time who the boy is. You're very anxious, Mr. Patient. Perhaps there's more in this than I thought. I pay you to ask questions, not to think. Maybe you don't pay me enough for something so important. Don't you threaten me. Please, you're hurting me. What do you think you're doing? Go away, Dylan. If I find you hurting her, I'll break your miserable neck. Dylan, go away. Miss Glynis and I understand each other quite well. A good day to you both. You make a fortune. You're that stupid, you couldn't make a bed. But Glynis, I... <laughs>
see who they were. One looked like young Venner. Oh. No, my boy, don't do that to me. My face is too old to be magnified. <laughs> <laughs> Sir Frederick Venner, my lady, and a gentleman from France. Madame, I'm the Duke de Beauvais. But who is it? Sir Frederick didn't say Miss Virginia. He just said to fetch you at once. Your Majesty. But I don't want to be the King of France. This child, the son of Marie Antoinette and Louis XVI of France? Yes, madam. On their execution, I became his guardian to proclaim and maintain his rights to the throne of France. I will stay here. I will not be the king of France. <laughs> Yes, I guessed. <laughs> you naughty boy. I was frightened when I hid from you. It was cold and dark in there. Like the prison. Oh, honey, it's, it's just a priest hole. It's called that because in the olden days, the monks used to hide there when they were being persecuted. And it's a secret. Nobody knows about it except you and me and Aunt Phil. I won't tell anyone. <laughs> Thank you. Come on now. Time to say your prayers. And honey, you can say them out loud tonight. Now that we know all about you and who you are. You can pray for your mother and father and everyone else you love without being frightened anymore, can't you? O oh, almighty God, out of thine infinite goodness, have mercy on the souls of my dear father and my beloved mother. And God bless Aunt Elizabeth and Therese, my sister. And God bless Uncle Philippe and Aunt Fell and Captain Ogden. And most of all, O oh Heavenly Father, please bless Virginia. You don't mind me calling you Virginia, do you? No, honey, of course I don't. Anyway, if you can say Virginia to God, you can certainly say it to me, can't you? Come on now, into bed. And you go to sleep. There's no one to worry about anything, do you understand? It'll be all right. Night, night. Good night, Virginia. It is good to have taught him to pray again. Oh, there are so many things he still has to learn. How to speak without being afraid the whole time. How to play again. Even how to smile. Yes. Thank God you will never know half the things my countrymen did to this child. It was by God's providence that you were It was by God's providence I'd always been interested in, I don't know. I'm afraid I wasn't a very skillful navigator. I wanted to cross the channel and land on the south coast of England. Then the wind changed and the fog came now. We were carried out to sea. Yes, they found the wreckage of the balloon just drifting in the water. There was just time for me to land the child. That poor little boy. No wonder he was too frightened to speak to anyone. No. No. No, no more. No. Please, no more! No more! I don't want to... 
father is dead now. They cut off his head this morning. And they will cut off yours too, if you do not tell the truth. Now tell us what you saw. It was in the morning. All the gentlemen of the court were there. She was holding a morning lamp. No, no, at night. Late at night. No. Late at night. No. Morbandy. No, please. Please. Pity. What pity did his family show us, citizen Colonel Saint Gérard? The Republic has placed him in my charge. It is not part of my orders that he should be driven insane. The Republic needs a witness to his mother's infamy. I know how far to go. He'll talk before I finish with him. Your father is dead now. You will never see your mother again. Please. Tell us first. You saw men, many men going into your mother's room, didn't you? Well, I saw many men going into the bedroom of my mother. Queen Marie Antoinette. Please let me see my mother. Please. Please let me see my mother. You will see her. Please. Yes. You will see her. seriously think of taking him back to France now, do you? He is Louis the Seventeenth. His place is with these people. With people who murdered his mother and father? You do not believe in kings, Miss Trail. You're a good citizen of the Republic of America. Look, I'm not talking about kings. I'm talking about that poor, frightened little boy in there. 
Don't you see what he, only he, can do? He can pick up the whole of his broken country and mend her with his child's hands. Can he, after seeing his own mother and father dragged through the gutters and the slaughterhouses of Paris? He will be a different kind of king, closer to his people. That is just one of your dreams. What do you, in the new world, know of kingship? We know that a king is not a god. No. But he is like a god in one respect. He is what his people believe him to be. I know this to be true. I have proof of it. To rescue him from that prison, we had to find a substitute, a boy of his own age, like him physically. Twenty women offered their sons. Twenty. You mean that in, in order to save Louis, some other child had to be sold into captivity? The leaders of the revolution must never discover that he has escaped them. So some wretched little boy was sacrificed? Yes. If you had a son yourself, could you let that happen to him? Oh, no. Not your son. You put your own son in this prison in Paris. But how? Tonight, huh? Yes. Then you should make the king do it himself. Open it. first century to desert his post. Where is it? 165 stairs, citizen. Look after you, Richard, as best I can. Richard, as soon as the king is safe, where his enemies cannot reach him, I shall return for you. Will that be long? I hope not. But you will come back for me. Of course I will. You must go now. Get ready for bed, child. Goodbye, my son. Sometimes I dream that they have found out that they have killed him. And they 
it is I who have killed him. Don't you understand? He was more like the king than any of the others. But your wife? My wife died years ago. Stare at me. Judge me. Perhaps I deserve it. I wasn't judging you. It's you who are judging yourself. Yes. And I will, until I can go back for Richard. Until he's safe. So he's a duke, is he? French duke. Is the boy his son? I can't find out. They're all that close. Mm. You better go back before they miss you. How'd you get from the island? Dylan brought me. He won't say anything. Well, go then. Go quickly. Hey, but you're a gasping girl, Glennis. He? I don't trust him. Are you sure that he... Ogden would never forgive you if you broke it. I am careful. Virginia? Yes? You know Richard? Uncle Philippe's son? Yes. I saw him last night. But that's impossible, Louis. You know he took your place in the temple. It's difficult to explain. I saw him. But he was not there. Virginia? I believe you, Louis. He smiled, but he was not happy. Must he stay there always, Virginia? No. No, your Uncle Philippe will go to fetch him. Very soon, perhaps. We do not mention Richard in my prayers, do we? No, honey, and we should. Tonight we will. Dylan feeds the horses at five. May I go and help? Of course. Oh, Virginia, I want to stay here always, all my life. If I had to go away, would you come with me? Look, honey, you shan't go away if you don't want to. Not if I have any say in it at all. You know, Virginia, I've been thinking. I am ten years old next week. Yes. When I'm older, you could marry me. Couldn't you? You wouldn't mind waiting, would you? No, honey. I wouldn't mind waiting. Thank you. being foolish, but I just had a proposal of marriage. It is one of the mysteries of women. They always cry when they're happy. Or 
Did you refuse? I neither accepted nor refused. That is worse. Poor Venna. You're wrong. It was not Sir Frederick this time. No. When I'm an old woman, I shall tell my grandchildren how once I was humbly asked for my hand in marriage by the King of France. And I was worried that he might have fallen into the wrong hands. Have you had any news from Paris? Oh, what selfish women are. Oh, don't think I'm not concerned for your son. I am, indeed I am, and I know how much you want to go back for him. But when you say there isn't any news, Say it, Virginia. Oh, sometimes I dream that everything's all right. That you don't have to go back to France. That Louis is not the king, but your son. It is not wise to dream in wartime. Not even for a moment. Not even for a moment. Just give him this medicine every four hours. Suppose he dies. He will not. It only makes him look ill. Yes, and then what? You don't suppose they're going to let him walk out of here just because you say he's sick? I've informed Colonel Saint-Gérard that the boy needs country air. We must move him out of Paris to a place where he's less well guarded. So, how is he? The fever is running very high. Poor little wretch. It would have been better for him and for us if he'd been sent to the guillotine with the rest of his family. It is hard not to feel compassion for the child. Mm. However, this is a political matter, Dr. Perrin. Our own personal feelings do not enter into it. Do not misunderstand me, Colonel. I have seen too much suffering to be appalled by it. You say he needs country air? Urgently. Why? The lungs are congested. If he's kept here, he will die. At the moment, it is politically essential he should live. And as I am responsible for his life. You will authorize his removal? When I am convinced it is necessary. Citizen Seymour, what was the name of that old doctor, the one that attended the royal family before the trial? You doubt my skill, Colonel? Your skill, doctor? No. But in view of the fact that I bear great responsibility, I wish to have your opinion confirmed. What was the man's name? I do, do not remember. Dr. Hutfor. But he was executed. No. Merely imprisoned for a time. He can be sent for immediately. It's quite unnecessary. That is your opinion, Doctor. Not mine. Doctor Hotfall, remember every mole and scar on that boy's body. You know at once that this is not the king. Quiet. They Quiet. will have our heads if they find Keep out. Quiet. Doctor Orford cannot get to Paris before tomorrow morning. We still have a little time. In a way, the whole problem of the rescue has been simplified. That jailer, Simon, he has to help us. He has no choice. Then, when we have rescued the boy, where can we hide him? Gentlemen, may I present Monsieur Petitval. Petitval? The banker? But he will betray us. It is true, Monsieur le Marquis, that I hold a position of some trust under the revolution. They find it difficult not to trust me, since I find them money from time to time. Monsieur Petitval has never been suspected for one moment. As soon as we have the boy safe, I'll take him in my own carriage to my chateau at Vitry. The Duc de Beauvais is being informed at once, and we will carry out his original plan. What is the earliest hour we can expect this Dr. Hautefort to arrive in Paris? Yes. Come in. Dr. Utfor. Ah, doctor. I want you to make a very thorough examination of the prisoner. Yes, Colonel. Make no mistakes. Follow me.
fortunate not to be out there yourself. What do you suggest I tell the government? That a handful of royalists snatched their king from under our very noses? My men are searching everywhere. All roads are watched. The boy cannot escape us for long. He'd better not. I have no wish to lose my head. Do you realize that alive and in the hands of royalists, it could destroy us and the Republic? There is a way in which we can protect ourselves and the Republic. How? A funeral. Announce that the king is dead? Every gossip in Paris knows that he was sick. We can procure a body from one of the hospitals. A funeral can be seen to leave the temple with the child's coffee. Very well. But nonetheless, it is vital the boy should be found and killed. If the boy dies, his uncle, the Count of Provence, becomes claimant to the throne. Find the boy and kill him. Surely it is better to have a child king alive here in your power than an adult in Vienna probably raising an army against us. He'll do that anyway, after your proposed funeral takes place. Nothing need be announced officially. Gossip will say that the king's body was in the coffin. Once we hold him again, we can deny the rumor. It was the son of one of the guards who was in the coffin. You're very persuasive, Citizen Colonel Saint-Gérard. When it suits you, very well. Try to capture the child alive. If that proves impossible, he must be killed. That is all? Yes. You're both aware, of course, I know nothing of this. You may report to me officially when you've made all the arrangements for your funeral. It seems to me this child is bigger than the king, is he? What does it matter? I put you a question. The boy was in your keeping. You should know. Perhaps he is. The citizen director asked me if I detected a lack of zeal in your manner. I did not answer. Perhaps for your sake it was just as well. Once I was proud of our revolution. We fought for an ideal. Liberty. Equality. The brotherhood of man. Out of all this misery must come greatness for France. Rest assured, I shall do my duty. Let's have this funeral and be done with it. Escaped. Last night, the body of another boy was taken into the temple. That is the body in the coffin. But our master, the Count of Provence, has already proclaimed himself king. If he has been too hasty, he will be the laughing stock of Europe. Saint Gerard's men are searching everywhere for the boy. You, Lautrec, must find him first. Look what William has brought for you. What a beautiful king. <laughs> Oh, yeah, a happy birthday, sir. Oh, oh, really excel, oh. sir. <laughs> well done. <laughs> <laughs> now you must wish. Out aloud? Yeah, of course. course. I wish. I wish that I would stay here always and never be the king of France. You do not mean that, Louis. You are the king. I like it here. What we like is not always what we must do. You belong to France, Louis. France 
needs you. I am sorry I said it. Louis, never forget that you are the king. Catch your cake, honey. I think I must start having birthdays again. I gave them up when I was 21 on principle. Can't you see how he feels? Kings must learn to conquer their feelings. Haven't you got any pity at all for him? Philippe. I love you. Not me, Virginia. Some shadow of me which you have invented. How can you say such a thing? I'm the man who will take that little boy back to France, back into his nightmare. Can you love such a man? Are you enjoying your birthday, Louis? Oh, I'll never forget this. We're so happy to have you with us. Willem, saddle a horse for the Duke de Beauvais. Quickly. Yes, sir. Thank you, Captain. Andrew, what an excellent idea. Here you are, honey. Happy birthday. Thank you. Virginia, how pretty. I'll, I'll show you how it works. Oh. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> and this is from me. Thank you. Now you will not be obliged to borrow the captains anymore. He needs his for looking at pretty ladies while they're paddling. <laughs> <laughs> My sweet child. What is it? Sir Frederick Vendor, my lady. He wishes to speak to you, sir. Madame, will you excuse me? What did Sir Frederick say? Saddle a horse, that's all. I've got to know, Dylan. They're in the library. You can get in if you wanted to. Oh, you. Always saying you love me. I'm no peeping Tom. Dylan, I'll marry you if you help me now. The Navy has placed HMS Neptune at your disposal. She is their fastest ship. With a fair wind, you should reach the French coast by tomorrow. But we'll have to ride like the very devil to catch this tide in Pembroke. You're going back, aren't you? I'll leave you to make your farewells. so far away your war that suddenly it's here with us in this room but it is your war too now you are the guardian of the king of france i cannot do this without you you must help me you know what this is Louis. his father's will i'm placing many lives in your hands your own among them the horses are ready, sir. They hid something with some papers in there. Get them out there. No, I didn't. Please get them for me, Dylan.
Holmes, what do you think you're doing? Glennis, what if I am musket away from here as quickly as possible? Don't be a fool, man. They don't even suspect you. William saw me. He'd have told. I did it for you, Glynis. All right, you did it for me. Now, for heaven's sake, keep your head. Now, listen, Dylan. She wants you to ride after our Frenchman and bring him back. Oh, I can't do that. He would find out. Exactly. So you need never catch up with him. Your horse could lose a shoe, couldn't he? Now, go to Mr. Patient in Tenby and tell him I've got this. Tell him it's for sale if he wants it. At my price. What is that, Glynis? Never you mind. Dylan, it's the Pembroke Road. You know it better than they do. Yes, miss. As soon as you reach Tembe, you ought to rouse the watch and send him back to the island at once. Do you understand? Yes, miss. Well, hurry then. Don't you worry, Miss Virginia. He'll catch up with him. Come on, boy. Come on. Sent the guard to the island? Yes. Good. Now tell me, how long will it take to reach Pembroke? An hour and a half, riding fast. Uh, half past eight, half past nine, half past ten, eleven, yes. You should be back on the island by midnight. You will tell them that your horse fell lame and that by the time you got to Pembroke Harbour, the Frenchman had already sailed. Why are you so interested in this? My dear boy, all things are interesting to us gentlemen of the press. And besides, you're a fine lad. I don't want to see you swing by the neck at the crossroads. Oh, do you know? We'll let the word that you go to France. And let us pray that his passage may be a successful one. The news, the news from France. Uh, very sad, very sad. Poor little boy. King? His funeral was three days ago. They say he died a natural death, but, well, there was an attempt to rescue him, you know. They failed, of course. Five royalists were involved. All of them were captured. All of them were sent to Madame Guillotine. And we live in tragic days. Tragic days. <laughs> You're not well, miss. I'll get the carriage. Oh, no, no, it's, it's all right. It's hot in here. Where are those papers? Don't you handle me, Mr. Patient. I told you my price. I don't know. It's worth it. See? The Royal Seal of France, isn't it? Mm, you've opened it. I don't know French. All right, I'll pay. There. Oh, it's all there. The runners shall miss you. The citizen director says he cannot be disturbed. Does he? Then take him there. If that does not disturb him, neither will the day of judgment. The loan has been sanctioned. All we need now is your signature. Send him in at once.
Where did this come from? From Wales. From a woman in this place called Tenby. We must take immediate action. Perival, this is a matter of extreme urgency, if you would be so good. Of course. Citizens, good day. The king is on this island, mm. Caldy. Who was the boy we were holding in the temple? The Beauvais son. Are you sure? Quite sure. I may have captured the jailer, Simon. With a certain persuasion, he told us the full story. This agent of yours, patient, do you trust him? I never trust a spy. He is already a traitor to his own country. Colonel Saint-Gérard, I am sending you to call the island. I shall arrange for a fast ship to be put at your disposal at once. We will land at night. This time, there are to be no half measures. The boy is to be killed. I must ask you to entrust this mission to some other man. You must what? The Colonel saint Gerard does not know. I mean, I am a soldier, not a hired assassin. This is an act of political necessity. Do I take it you refuse? Otherwise, I must remind you, it was your responsibility that the boy escaped in the first place. And that a funeral had to be staged to cover up your criminal negligence. No one knows it was not the king we buried. No one must ever know. That is why the boy must now be killed. Merci, monsieur. is safe? Yes. He's waiting for you at the chateau with Petitval. We must ride at once. They suspect where he is? No. But they know the king is on Corley Island. Petitval was present when the spy's report came in. Then I'll ride for the coast with Richard tonight. I have a fast ship waiting. <laughs>
trusted Petty Val was a royalist. There can be no doubt. The body of the child we found buried near the chapel has been identified. It was the Beauvais's son. But why should anyone seek to kill him? Because the assassin thought he was the king. Huh. I still seek a motive. Who besides ourselves has any interest in the king's death? The Count of Provence. The assassin, this man Lautrec, was in his pay. So, the Count claims the throne of France. For what it is worth. I find it ironical that in a few hours I must sail to this Welsh island on the orders of the Republic to complete the work of a royalist faction. <laughs> Decided. I'm going to be a sailor when I grow up. You've got a long time to wait yet, honey. Captain Ogden was one when he was 14. Louis, you shouldn't set your heart on what you want to be yet. Not just yet. You're thinking of Uncle Philippe, aren't you? Yes. But I don't have to be a king if I don't want to. I can abdicate. Can't I? I hadn't thought of that. I will. You stand there. Yeah? That's right. You be the leader of the Chamber of Deputies. I, Louis the Seventeenth. We. Oh, yes. We, Louis the Seventeenth, by God's grace, King of France and Navarre, do hereby abdicate. Abdicate what, Virginia? All our rights. All our rights to the throne. How's that? Excellent. Now that I'm not a king anymore, I can be a midshipman. <laughs> well, king or no king, it's high time you were in bed. Come. Aye, aye, sir. Now, you go to sleep and stay there. Come on now, lie down. Sleep well, Captain. You sleep well too, Virginia. Well, what do you expect Virginia and me to do of an evening? Play cribbage, I suppose. An excellent game, ma'am. An odious game, and I'm very bad at it. If de Beauvais' ship returns from France, she'll return without your dashing off to Pembroke in search of her. And he is going for me because he knows that I am worried to death. And I'm very grateful to you. The Duke is perfectly capable of looking after himself. There may be news of the ship at Pembroke. And if we're to catch the time, Oh, I... go, 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 go. There's nothing so tedious as a man who wants to be somewhere else. Good night, Lady Fair. Good night, Frederick. Good night, my dear Lydia. We'll be back early in the morning, and I trust our news may be good news. Oh, I pray that it will be. Good luck. Thank you. Good night, Captain Arthur. Good night, sir. Good night, Jenny. Not a man in the house. Damn it, I feel like a nun. <laughs> oh, well. I'll get ready for bed. Now, such a small island would not be easy to find. Down to the beach. I'll guide them in from the top here. They'll see the light more easily. And take them straight to the priory as soon as they land.
Tell my men to be ready. Where is Glynis? What do you do in the paddock? We're expecting visitors. Visitors? Look for yourself. But that's a French warship. You're a spy. So are you. And a murderer. But I never meant this. She tricked me. Are you? Give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. and sleeps very lightly. That's where the boy sleeps, next to the young mistress. Good. Go to your room and wait there. Sergeant, see that all doors are guarded. or I'll break it down. Open it! I am here on duty, mademoiselle. I have orders to take the boy whom you've been harboring back to France. Where is he? Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but he's not here. We took him to the mainland. When? Yesterday. Yesterday afternoon. For so beautiful a woman, you are a remarkably poor lie, mademoiselle. His bed is warm, 
His clothes are there. Look, I tell you, this boy is not here. Your room is charming, mademoiselle, charming. It would hurt me very much indeed to have to smash it to pieces. I congratulate poor citizen de Beauvais on his excellent taste. What has happened to Philippe? Where is he? Now we are both asking questions. The same question, in fact. Where is he? If we place equal value on the answers, we will save time and unpleasantness. De Beauvais and his son are alive. For the moment. They are being well cared for in the temple prison. Their ultimate fate, however, depends on the success of my mission. I make a bargain. Give me the boy. And I'll give de Beauvais and his son to you. Even if I were in a position to make this bargain with you, I know that de Beauvais would not agree to it. Every man values his life. I am here because I value mine. De Beauvais has spoken very freely to us. Under pressure, I admit. But how otherwise do you think that I would know that the boy is here? You are lying. That is too hasty a conclusion. Think about it. The offer will not be open very long. Where is my maid? If you need her, she will be released. Thank you. Think it over. I will find the boy before I leave, I promise you. I would prefer it without violence. Madam, you are Lady Fell, mistress of Cordy Priory. I am aware of that. I wish to see the boy at once. Your employers seem very interested in my establishment. They are well served. By whom, I wonder? Madam, I insist on seeing the child. To cut his throat? Will you produce him, or must my men go and find him? I'll send for him. Virginia! Virginia! They've come for Louis! Virginia! Let her go. Search everywhere. Rip every room to pieces till you find him. When you are ready to talk, ladies, I am at your service. What did this man say to you? He said that Philippe is their prisoner in Paris and he will not release him unless we give them Louis. To where we would rather die first. It's only a trick. Oh, can we be sure of that? Listen. We must play for time, Virginia. It won't be long before Captain Benner is back. What can we do till then? Two women represent a powerful combination, my dear. Especially if one is very rich and the other very beautiful. If one fails, the other should succeed. If we are to save the boy, they're the best weapons we have, Virginia. This Frenchman finds you attractive. Here, take this. Send the maid here. Sir? Go to your mistress's room. Find out what you can. Yes, sir. Just let me out, Miss Virginia. They're after the boy. How do you know? The Colonel, the good-looking one, asked me all kinds of questions. But not knowing anything, I couldn't say anything. I see. Well, I've hidden him where nobody will find him. Brought you something to drink, Miss Virginia. Thank you. 
Perhaps you'd like me to take some to the young gentleman. Something warm. He'll be needing it, I think. No, let's see you. They'll be watching you, Miss Virginia. Go and wait for me in the sitting room, Glennis. I'll call you if I need you. Search your room. you for a moment alone. Well? Colonel, I should like to make you an offer. My aunt is a very rich woman. Surely oh, you will. How interesting. Tell me now, what is the value of this King of France in English gold? 20,000 guineas. <laughs> what do you think the revolution is? A pretty dress in a shop window. Do you really think I can be bought? No, Colonel, I do not think that you can be bought. But I love this little boy very much. Could you not leave him here with me in peace? I have orders to take him back. I know that if you return to France without him, your life will be forfeit. Why must you return? And if I do not? You've already confessed to a certain admiration for me. Perhaps I could help you to find a new life here. Do you expect me to believe this?
life is king. 